She was known as the Lady of the Shield Arm. From the ashes of childhood tragedy, she would grow to be a great woman of Rohan, and with the help of an unexpected brother-in-arms, she would destroy Sauron's greatest servant. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the life and travels of Eowyn. Eowyn is born in 2995 of the Third Age to her father, Eomund, and mother, Theodwin. Her brother, Eomer, is four years older. When Eowyn is just seven years old, her father is killed in an orc ambush in the Emin Muil. Later that very year, Theodwin would die of illness, leaving Eomer and Eowyn orphaned. They are brought to the house of Theodwin's brother, King Theoden, who was already a widower himself, raising his son, Theodred. Theoden would raise Eomer and Eowyn as his own son and daughter. Eowyn is described as tall and slender, with grace and pride that she inherits from her mother. Over the years, Eowyn would see her uncle weakened by the words and poison of Grima Wormtongue. And in February 3019, she would learn of her cousin's death in one of the earliest battles of the War of the Ring. However, Theoden would be healed by Gandalf the White and resolved to march out from Edoras with his Rohirrim to fight back against Sauron. Knowing that he may well be riding to his death and the death of Eomer, who is now his heir, Theoden asks who shall be left in charge of his people, saying, in whom do my people trust? Hama, the door ward replies, in the house of Eorl. Thus Eowyn, who is fearless and loved by all, is left to rule the people of Rohan in the king's stead. Eowyn knelt before the king and received from him a sword and a fair corslet. Farewell, sister daughter, he said. Dark is the hour, yet maybe we shall return to the Golden Hall. But in Dunharrow, the people may long defend themselves. And if the battle go ill, thither will come all who escape. Eowyn leads the civilian population of Rohan to Dunharrow, where they would take refuge should Saruman's forces prove the mightier. Later at Dunharrow, after the victory at Helm's Deep, Aragorn makes to leave for the Paths of the Dead. Eowyn attempts to convince Aragorn to stay with the army, and when Aragorn says it is the path he must take, Eowyn offers to go with him. Aragorn reminds her of her duty to rule her people in Theoden's absence, to which she responds, Shall I always be left behind when the riders depart? To mind the house while they win renown, and find food and beds when they return? A time may soon come, said he, when none will return. Then there will be need of valor without renown, for none shall remember the deeds that are done in the last defense of your homes. Yet the deeds will not be less valiant, because they are unpraised. And she answered, All your words are to say, You are a woman, and your part is in the house. But when the men have died in battle and honor, you have leave to be burned in the house, for the men will need it no more. But I am of the house of Eor, and not a serving woman. I can ride and wield blade, and I do not fear either pain or death. In the end, Eowyn would take on the guise of Durnhelm, a rider of Rohan. She carries with her Mariadoc Brandybuck, who was likewise ordered to stay behind, though Mary doesn't realize her true identity at this time. The Rohirrim ride to aid Gondor in the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. Durnhelm stays near to Theoden throughout the battle, and bears witness to the Witch King's attack upon the king. Theoden is mortally wounded, pinned beneath his horse, Snowmane, as the Nazgul descends upon him. But Theoden was not utterly forsaken. The knights of his house lay slain about him, yet one stood there still, Durnhelm the Young, faithful beyond fear, and he wept, for he had loved his lord as a father. Right through the charge, Mary had been born unharmed behind him, until the shadow came, and then Windfola had thrown them in his terror. Mary crawled on all fours like a dazed beast, and such a horror was on him that he was blind and sick. He dared not open his eyes or look up. Then out of the blackness in his mind, he thought he heard Durnhelm speaking. Yet now the voice seemed strange recalling some other voice that he had known. 
Be gone, foul Dwimalek, lord of Carrion. Leave the dead in peace. A cold voice answered. Come not between the Nazgul and his prey, or he will not slay thee in thy turn. He will bear thee away to the houses of lamentation, beyond all darkness, where thy flesh shall be devoured, and thy shriveled mind be left naked to the lidless eye. A sword rang as it was drawn. Do what you will, but I will hinder it if I may. Hinder me, thou fool. No living man may hinder me. Then Mary heard of all sounds in that hour the strangest. It seemed that Durnhelm laughed. But no living man am I. You look upon a woman. Eowyn I am, Eowyn's daughter. You stand between me and my lord and kin. Be gone if you be not deathless. For living or dark undead, I will smite you if you touch him. Eowyn clove the neck of the fell beast killing the Witch King's steed. The Nazgul rises from the wreck and strikes Eowyn's shield with his mace, breaking both shield and arm of his foe. Just as he raises his mace to kill, Mary, who had resolved that Eowyn should not die alone, stabs the Witch King in the back of the knee with his barrow blade. And with her last strength, Eowyn drove her sword beneath crown and mantle as the great shoulders bowed before her. The sword broke, sparkling into many shards. The crown rolled away with a clang. Eowyn fell upon her fallen foe, but lo, the mantle and hauberk were empty. Shapeless, they now lay on the ground, and a cry went up into the shuddering air and faded to a shrill wailing, a voice bodiless and thin that died and was swallowed up and was never heard again in that age of this world. Unlike in the films, Theoden speaks his last words to Mary and Eomer, and dies unaware that his niece lies just feet away. Some of his final thoughts are of Eowyn, calling her dearer than daughter. Eomer discovers his sister on the battlefield, causing him in his anguish to say his famous words, repeatedly screaming death, and calling his riders to ride to ruin and the world's ending. However, Eowyn was not dead. She would be borne away from the battlefield and taken to the Houses of Healing in Minas Tirith. Afterward, Eowyn would be given the title Lady of the Shield Arm in recognition of her defeat of the dreaded Witch King. Both Mary and Eowyn would fall under the Black Breath, a terrible weapon of the Nazgul which could poison its victims and lead to death. Fortunately, after the army of the Witch King is defeated, Aragorn would make his way in secret to the Houses of Healing. Using the Atheles plant, he calls Eowyn, Merry, and Faramir back from the darkness and heals them. All three, due to their injuries, would be left behind in Minas Tirith, as Aragorn leads the remaining soldiers of Rohan and Gondor to the Black Gate. It is during this time, awaiting the news of the battle, that Eowyn meets Faramir, and the two fall in love. They receive news from one of the great eagles that Sauron had finally been defeated, and the city begins preparations for the returning victorious army. In conversation with Faramir, Eowyn declares that the shadow has departed, and that she will be a shield maiden no longer. No longer does she desire to be a queen, or to seek renown in battle. Instead, she says she shall be a healer and love all things that grow and are not barren. Now, we don't know to what extent the shield maidens were a part of Rohan's history. Aside from Eowyn's use of the term, there is only a single other reference to shield maidens, which comes in the history of Middle-earth. In The War of the Ring, Christopher Tolkien shares an earlier version of a text saying that the women of Rohan took part in fighting an invasion of Easterlings roughly 400 years prior to Eowyn's time. With Eowyn putting aside her sword and shield, the tradition would apparently come to an end 
with its most famous member. On May 8th, Eowyn and many others make the return journey to Edoras, where they place Theoden King in his final resting place. Eomer, now king of Rohan, rejoices at the union of Faramir and Eowyn, saying the friendship of the Mark and of Gondor is now bound with a new bond. Aragorn says that in Eowyn, Rohan has given Gondor the fairest thing in its realm, and that it heals his heart to see her in bliss. Eowyn and Eomer give to Mary a horn of Rohan, an heirloom of their house, crafted by the dwarves and taken from the horde of the dragon Skatha. Mary would later use this horn as they retake the Shire. Eowyn and Faramir are married in the year 3020 and settle in the lands of Ithilien, of which Faramir is made the ruling prince by King Elisar. Among the inhabitants of Ithilien are not only the Gondorian people, but also a group of elves led by Legolas. In later days, Eowyn and Eomer would continue to correspond with Merry, for when he becomes Master of Buckland in the year 11 of the Fourth Age, they would send him gifts. Eowyn and Faramir would have at least one child, a son named Elboron. Elboron would eventually succeed his father as Prince of Athelion and Steward of Gondor. We also know that Eowyn and Faramir had at least one grandchild, a grandson named Barahir, who would go on to write the tale of Aragorn and Arwen, found in the appendices of The Return of the King. We don't know for certain when Eowyn's life would come to an end. We know that she would precede both her husband and brother in death, meaning she would die sometime prior to the year 63 of the Fourth Age. Yet we are left with the hope that Eowyn would have many, many years of happiness with her family in Athelion, as she lives her life as a healer and the lady of the realm. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom de Bombadil 19, Listen Me the Cinda, Mandu Pandu, Andrew Carlisle, The Mighty Mim, Team Weasel, Rabbi Rob Thomas, Sky Carcass, Slide Belts, Dane Ragnarsson, Salim Rahman, Zetrock, Berto Berg, Grand Strategy Nerd, Graham Derricott, The Dark Haired One, Wyland, Michael Wu, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.